Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss power angle curve. So basically, the power angle curve shows the relationship between the steady state real power variation with respect to the load angle. So in this video, first of, first of all, let us find the expression for the real power. So basically, to find the expression for real power, let us consider a SMIB system that is single machine infinite bus system. So here a single machine what I mean to say it is so if you are having a number of synchronous generators operating in parallel then the number of synchronous generators operating in parallel can be replaced by an equivalent generator. So that equivalent generator or equivalent machine is nothing but the uh, single machine here and IB is the infinite bus. So the infinite bus is characterized by two quantities one is the system frequency and the other one is the system voltage so for the infinite bus your system frequency remains constant constant and it is independent of the real power it is independent of the real power flow and your system voltage is also maintained constant and it is independent of it is independent of the reactive power supplied or absorbed reactive power supplied or absorbed so your infinite bus is characterized by the system frequency and the system voltage which remains constant irrespective of the change in real power or reactive power so in practice this infinite bus won't exist but it is useful for making approximate uh, or you can say it is useful for making uh, approximations that the system voltage and system frequency is constant uh, when modeling a connection to the uh, large utility or grid networks so it is just useful for making a modeling connection to the large utility or grid networks so this is single machine infinite bus system so in a single machine uh, let me consider it as a synchronous machine that uh, single machine is a synchronous machine and this synchronous machine is having the internal EMM E will be given by magnitude of E with angle delta so this is your synchronous machine with the internal angle and uh, it is having a direct axis synchronous reactance that is XD and the transmission line reactance is XL and uh, other terminals of this synchronous generator we are having an infinite bus and this infinite bus is having the voltage of V with angle 0. So this is basically the single machine infinite bus system. Now for this single machine infinite bus system let us see the expression for the real power and the reactive power. So in order to find the real power and the reactive power we shall we have to obtain the complex power output that is the complex power output is S will be given by PS plus J into Q of S. So PS is the real sending power, QS is the reactive sending power. So this will be given by V into I conjugate. V into I conjugate. So this is very simple. So from here I can write your V into your I conjugate. Your I conjugate can be given by E delta minus V zero upon J into XD plus XL and this XD the total reactance XD plus XL is considered as X and this X is nothing but the transfer reactance. So this reactance is nothing but the transfer reactance that is the sum of XD plus XL is transfer reactance so I can replace it with simply X so this is X so I am having a conjugate up here so you can write this expression as simply V into so I shall split this so after splitting this is E delta upon JX minus V upon JX so here again we are having conjugate now we all know that this J represents an angle of 90 degrees so you can write it as V into magnitude of E into if I take uh, this uh, X is 90 degrees 
So you can also write it as the form of x 90 degree and this 90 degree when I take it to numerator this is plus 90 degree it, when I take it to numerator it will become minus 90 degree. So this angle will be minus 90 plus delta minus 90 plus delta upon x minus if I multiply here it is j on numerator and denominator you will get uh, j into j is j square that is minus 1 so it will become plus so this is plus j v upon x and here we are having a conjugate now if I remove the conjugate so before that if I tell you if, if you are having the angle some delta and this angle delta can be given by cos of delta that is cos s of delta that is cos delta plus j sin delta and uh, if you take the conjugate of this then it will be given by cos of delta minus j sin of delta and it can also be written as minus of delta. So this is where plus delta is becoming minus delta when you take conjugate. So similarly here uh, if you consider this minus 90 plus delta as x that is angle of x now when you take the conjugate of this it will become minus x so similarly here it will become plus 90 minus delta is equal to minus x after taking conjugate so similarly here you can have the expression as this is this is magnitude of v so magnitude of v into this will be magnitude of e into after taking the conjugate this will be 90 minus delta upon x and uh, we all know that the conjugate of a plus jb will be equal to a minus jb so this is all we all know so similarly here this is a and this is plus j into b so it will become minus j of v upon x and the conjugate got removed now what you can do is you can just multiply this so after multiplying you will get your s will be equal to mod v mod that is the magnitude of v into e and this is 90 minus delta upon x minus j magnitude of v square upon x. So this is the expression you have got and now in order to obtain the real power you can write this angle as just cos 90 minus delta plus j sin 90 minus delta. So let us uh, split the real part and the imaginary part so that we are having ps plus jqs will be equal to mod v that is magnitude of v e and this will be equal to cos 90 minus delta upon x plus magnitude of v e this is sin 90 minus delta this is plus j upon x minus j mod v square upon x so this is the expression you get now what you can do is from here we can see this if you take j common here so this is your qs and this is your ps so this ps or if i can also see it as uh, the sending end power or you can say electrical power output so your ps will be given by magnitude of v e and cos 90 minus delta is sin delta upon x so here you can see the power transfer from the single machine to the infinite bus depends on the reactance so it is inversely proportional to the transfer reactance so lesser the transfer reactance more will be the power transfer so more will be the power transfer now let us see the power angle curve for both motor and generator so let us draw the power angle curve which shows the relationship between the which shows the relationship between the steady state real power variation with respect to the load angle so the load angle what we refer delta this angle is referred as a load angle rotor angle and the torque angle and this angle is also referred as the power angle now this angle is referred as power angle 
when a single machine is connect is connected to an infinite bus so this angle is called as a power angle when we are talking about a single machine which is connected to a infinite bus system so then only you can refer it as power angle in other uh, in in other circumstances we can see it as a load angle for the rotor angle so here uh, let me say this is 90 degree this is 180 again 270 this is 360 and similarly here i'm having minus 90 this is minus 180 so for the generator this is your ps or you can say pe uh, so this has a load angle this is the power angle delta and here we are having minus delta as the power angle so this power curve will be like this so this is for your generator and this is for motor and similarly you can also plot here so this is also for motor and you can go beyond this and again you get for the generator so you can see as your power angle approaches to 90 degree so you will be having the maximum power that is p max so from here you can find your p max will be given by simply ve upon x so this is the p max ve upon x this is also referred as the steady state power limit so this is the p max it is obtained at the power angle 90 and as the delta increases more than 90 the electrical power decreases and uh, at 180 degree it falls to zero and after 180 degree after 180 degree you can see the power is negative so the power is negative it implies that the power is supplied from the infinite bus to the synchronous machine so the power is supplied from the infinite bus to the synchronous machine that is why the power is reversed here and that is why we say it is a motoring action that is it is for the motor and similarly here you can also see the power is reversed so when the power is reversed means the machine the infinite bus to which we earlier supplying the power instead it uh, it is consuming the power it is supplying the power back to the synchronous machine so uh, in, earlier we have drawn it is a synchronous machine and the reactants and this is the infinite bus bar so earlier the power is flowing in this direction but when the delta goes beyond your 180 degree so that is in the second half from 180 degree to 360 degree you can see the power is flowing from this direction from the infinite bus to the uh, synchronous machine so this is how the load angle changes with respect to the uh, that is the power angle changes this is how the uh, sending power or you can say the steady state real power variation with respect to the power angle so this is all about the power angle curve i hope you understood well please subscribe channel thank you